Hi everybody and welcome to Travelling with Russell and welcome to a new video and welcome to Moscow. Now I've just got off the MCC or Moscow Central Circle and I'm actually going to head into Metropolis Shopping Centre. Now we're in a big metropolis here in Moscow so where better to go than Metropolis and go and see what the shops are like. I really want to go see how many stores have maybe changed branding, what's reopened, what's closed. It's been about a year since a lot of events started here in Russia, so it'll be kind of interesting. We're just walking over the overpass here from the train and the main highway, so the shopping centers are right in front of me here. So we're gonna head on inside and check it out. Now I'm walking around inside. This shopping center is very big. It's considerably bigger than my local shopping center, Solaris. It's not quite as big as Avia Park, which is the biggest in Europe and the biggest in Russia, but uh, it's over three levels, so you do get a little bit confused when you walk around. Just thought I'd point out some uh, kind of key changes, I guess, in the last year to this uh, shopping center and where stores have closed, stores have opened. You can see the big two-level H&M here still remains closed. Essentially, it did reopen, then it closed again, but the lights are still on. Okay, all the windows are kind of covered over, but they're kind of, they're still paying rent, so they're still here. Now, as is normal in most Russian shopping centers, especially the bigger ones, they tend to have them set out in kind of like a section. So this is mostly where I am now is the kids section on this upper level. And as you can just see here, Tommy Hilfiger children's wear. Now, in these larger shopping centers, they have a kind of thing where they kind of put in a whole wing of children's stores. So they have individual Tommy Hilfiger shop just for kids. Uh, this one was the Adidas store for kids. And of course, Adidas left Russia, as they're saying. They had a very big store here, by the way. And then the store that I really want to point out as the train comes towards us, hopefully uh, we're not going to get in the way, is Mother Care. Now, depending on where you're from in the world, you may have heard of, as the train goes by, uh, you may have heard of Mother Care, particularly in Europe, in England. Now, these guys closed for quite a few months. And then the franchise itself basically uh, was sold to another franchise owner who basically is continuing on with mother care. Now, the one thing that you'll notice is if you look along all of the top of the store here, there's no signage. And that's kind of interesting because it's pretty much the only store of this whole mall that's essentially open without a name on the door. But, Everything inside is exactly how it was. Pretty much it's just the changeover of the management and the franchise owner, that's the really the only difference. Uh, nothing signage wise inside has changed, but just interesting that they've not put a new sign up yet. So I'm not possibly gonna be able to cover every store in this shopping center. I really just wanna highlight a few major ones where there is sort of changes and noticeable changes. The one thing I do notice walking around here is how quiet it is. Uh, of course, it is a working day today. It's kind of late afternoon now, so slowly people will start coming in after work, but it does feel considerably more quiet than most of the malls that I go to. So just walking a little bit further along this upper level here, you'll see here the kids' stores on the right-hand side on this level, and then over here one more, I do. Uh, hey, baby. So there's a lot of kind of uh, specific stores aimed at kids and children. I kind of like that the way they've done it in these shopping centers, particularly across Russia, they do this, that entire sections of kids, entire for men, entire for ladies, and it works out much easier if you want to go shopping. Now I'm kind of heading towards this sportswear end. Now this was the Nike store. Now Nike essentially said they left Russia which I can understand, especially the Nike branded stores. You can still go to a lot of sports stores, as I'm gonna point out in a minute, where you can still buy other, uh, you can buy more Nike, right? But this is Li Ning. Now, this is a Chinese brand, which, look, at the end of the day, a lot of clothing companies produce their goods in China. So, you know, it's just a very well-known Chinese brand in China and they've decided to take over the running of the what was the Nike store locations 
So essentially, they kind of come into a bit of luck because they kind of get a ready-made store, they get all the fit out of the store as it was, and essentially it's kitted up for sports clothing and that kind of, if you want to call it, young fashion. It's actually quite a big store as well. It kind of goes all the way into the back and the side there, but all they need to do is put all the stuff on the shelves and start trading. Up on the top level here, which is very traditionally most shopping centers in Russia, they've got the huge food court off in the distance. So it's made up of kind of traditional takeaway places. And then there's sit down cafes with table service. And you can see here it goes down to the lower two levels. And there's actually a minus one level, which has some services as well. Um, but it's a big shopping center. Uh, but it really just looks quiet today, which I mean, I knew that kind of because it's a working day, but it just feels quiet. Now, I wonder if this kind of kiosk looks familiar. Now, it's not called what it used to be anymore. It's now called Donuts and Coffee is the actual name of the place. But if you have a look at the, the donuts on display, the signage, these green kind of signs, the TV monitors at the back, they look very similar, right, to Krispy Kreme, yes. So this is essentially what was Krispy Kreme, but now it's donuts and coffee. Now, right ahead of me here is a sports store called Sportmaster, and this is essentially a supermarket-sized uh, sports store. It has all sports sorts of clothing, sports equipment, gym equipment, and Ideally, if you're wanting things like Nike or Adidas, that's not here, if you like the, the actual physical stores. Sportmeister has the brands. They're essentially like a multi-brand shoe store, clothing store. And I've actually done a separate video on this exact location, which I'll put a pin for you to go and watch that if you like, if you want to do a walk around of the entire store individually. But where, like we see here, Adidas is not here. Uh, you've got Street Beats, just ahead of us. And then there's also Urban Vibes, which is another, another shoe store. So there's a lot of multi-brand shoe stores that essentially have all of the brands versus you going to what was the company stores. Now I hope so far you're finding this video kind of interesting. Uh, I'm not really wanting to show that it's an empty mall and there's no people here. I'm here on a working day. I know that very well. That Monday to Friday, let's say nine to five, you're not gonna get the same amount of people as you would on the weekends or in the evenings here from about 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. is where you'll see a lot more people in the shopping center. I really just wanna show the brands and some of the changes that's kind of occurred in the last year. And here's another very good example of the changes of management and ownership. So this originally was the North Face store. Now we know this very well because <laughs> North Face is everywhere in the shop. It's an entire store dedicated to North Face. You can see all the jackets there. Uh, a lot of kind of winter related stuff. Obviously now it's winter time here in Russia, but instead of North Face now, it's called Haika. So they didn't exactly uh, change North Face to South Face or anything like that, but I like the kind of name Haika. It's kind of got a good uh, ring to it in terms of what the store does and you know the kind of stuff you can buy but Hiker is here. So I just wanted to talk briefly about the cinemas here in Russia now this uh, cinema in the shopping center is definitely open however just because of how quiet it is now they don't have any of the kind of manned or I guess ladied cashiers they call them manned or ladies I don't know but they've just got the self serve checkouts now where you can basically choose the movie and the screening time and then you kind of walk in and they've got the concession stand at the end there. I do find it kind of interesting they've got Heineken fridges which in Russia you can get alcohol and wine in a cinema uh, which in Australia you can but not under all circumstances uh, but there are still some western movies here. Um, the one thing I do find interesting I just checked this out before They've got kind of the package deal where you can get the drink and popcorn, but it's Coca-Cola branded, which obviously Coca-Cola has long left Russia, but it's still on their signboards. And then <laughs> Mars here, I guess it's the kids when you got the Mars and the orange juice. I found that kind of funny. 
And then right ahead of us here is Sneaker Box. Now this was Reebok before, and all the products inside are Reebok. Again, there's essentially no change to the inside of the store, except that one sign up there called Sneaker Box. Uh, there's literally no one in the store at all today. Again, this uh, mid-afternoon, mid-day time, uh, mid midweek time, you're not gonna get a lot of shoppers, but Reebok is still here. And then here's another store that's been rebranded and fully open and trading, and it's called JNS. Now, JNS jeans. Now, it's kind of a very easy kind of rewording or lettering of the store, but this was Levi and still is Levi as the girls in the store run away from the camera as I walk through, but very nice big Levi signage right here. And again, the, it's the franchise ownership and the management that's changed and who had the franchise previously now, essentially has just continued on the operation and it's very well stocked. Of course, it's a little bit quiet inside, but everything is exactly how it was, barring that one sign right up there. And being that we're still at the end of January, the holiday season's still kind of uh, decorated in this shopping center. This is actually one of the main lobbies right here. Just how big it is and how expansive. This is very typical of one of the Moscow, Moscow region shopping centers. They just sort of build them just, I'm gonna say grandiose or just big. You know, there is a huge population in Moscow, of course, you're looking at 16 to 18 million people. So these shopping centers can support this kind of amount of people coming here. But at the end of the day, for you to get to this shopping center, like for me, for instance, I've got another 25 or 30 other shopping centers to choose from before I make this the one that I want to come shopping at. Now, I was recently watching another YouTuber's video over in Nova Zabersk, and they talked about they wanted uh, lead wrangler stores and they wanted sort of more farming related clothing, shoes, kind of, uh, you know, hard wearing clothing. And I've just noticed here, there's a Lee Wrangler store here in Moscow, right there as the guy kind of stares over at me. But uh, yeah, I guess it's kind of the competing brand to Levi's. Uh, if has anyone been to a Lee Wrangler store, let me know in the comments. Now, although I do cover a lot of the stores on the different videos that I make, I mean, I don't know every brand that I'm seeing here. Not all of these are international brands. A lot of them are primarily in Russia and uh, maybe only in Europe, for instance. So uh, it's just interesting to walk around and especially in this shopping center that it is not my usual one to see brands that I don't see at my close to home shopping center. You can see here Walford. Somebody's commented before about this brand. Uh, are they trading or are they open in Russia? And then also someone even mentioned about Echo eco over here so these are all open and you can just see the stores kind of keep going on this upper level so here's another shoe store that's another multi-brand shoe store called superstep now it seems to me that over the last six or eight months that this brand seems to have stepped up a little bit and uh, introduced a lot of the brands that uh, the other brands have sort of stepped away from so hopefully it's okay just to point a few of these out but here we can see Lacoste, and there's Reebok. So no, no worries, Reebok is here in Russia. Diodora, New Balance. And then this whole back wall is Adidas, or is it Adidas? Let me know, am I saying it right, Adidas? Or should I be saying Adidas? So yeah, there, there's not really the issue with getting shoes if you need them. They even may have more brands or more styles here than what the other stores may have had before. United Colors of Benetton right here. Now what I really wanted to show you was right behind here, this is Zara, or was Zara. Now it's been announced in the last two or three days, depending on when you're watching this video, this may even be open by now, but Zara is planning to open in approximately eight days from now. So although the store doesn't even look like it's ready to open, but uh, the name is going to change there's a, a Russian name that's sort of been created for it. But in eight days time, this store will be back open and trading again. 
Now maybe looking at this store, it doesn't look too familiar, unless you're really, you know, into your perfume and cosmetics. Now, uh, Illa Butte or Le Butte is the name of this store, a uh, beauty store basically. And this was Sephora or Sapporo, Sephora, which was the LVMH brand. Now the kind of, uh, how these kind of name, name changes come about and new ownership comes about. This was the original uh, brand store uh, back in 2016. And then Sephora basically bought this brand, then renamed all the stores Sephora. And then in a bit of a twist of fate, I guess, it's all gone back to the original brand name. So, and they've promised to honor all of the gift cards, all of the same staff are in the stores. Uh, it doesn't look as busy as it used to be. I remember always seeing a lot more people kind of in there. People like the Sephora brand and the name. And I wonder now if a lot of ladies have sort of turned uh, against it, if you like, because it's now back to the original brand store. Russian shopping centers love their escalators. Uh, they're kind of everywhere in this shopping center. There's up and down ones all over the place. I think there's a, about 20 escalators too many, but whoever the escalator salesman is in Moscow, he does a very good job selling to all these different shopping centers. Have a look at the big roof over the top of the upstairs area where the food court is there. Now, I just thought I'd show you right ahead here. And this was kind of well documented in the news going back probably six months ago now, it's more like summertime. This was of course Starbucks. Now it's Stars Coffee. And the actual uh, kind of ownership of Stars Coffee is a partnership with another, with a couple of different entrepreneurs, I guess. And they've actually changed this Starbucks now to Stars Coffee, but they've also introduced Redbox. And Redbox is a sushi chain if you like. So you can now get sushi and coffee in the same place. Uh, I think it's still just as busy as it ever was when it was Starbucks. Uh, there's very little change in terms of the store. I think for me, the only real difference is it may be the logo and then the cups. And that's really about it. The same kind of vibe and feel to the place is the same. But this other island in the shopping center here is definitely a lot quieter. Uniglo's not here, H&M's not here. It does feel much quieter down this end. I'm not sure what brand the store was that was on this corner here. Again, this is not my local shopping center, so I don't know all the original stores and what they changed into. But I do like all the fairy lights everywhere. I wonder if they'll keep these beyond January. And the other store that I kind of want to show right here, not really Strelson, but uh, this is Suitcase Pro, or Luggage Pro, Suitcase Pro. And this was the Samsonite store. Now, someone did mention it in a previous comment of a video that, you know, this is not Samsonite. There's no Samsonite in the store. I can assure you that there is Samsonite luggage in the Samsonite store. Uh, they wouldn't have anything to put in the store otherwise. Uh, so yeah, it's all exactly how it was, barring that one name change. Now I do have a question. Now, if you were wanting Samsonite luggage, would it really bother you that the Samsonite luggage store is not called Samsonite anymore and it's called Suitcase Pro? I mean, does it really bother you like the name of the store? I think really it is maybe the brand that you kind of come shopping for. I mean, if you're into the specific brands, of course, as we just go past DKNY here, Donna Karen, New York, DKNY, if anyone doesn't know it. But, you know, I don't think it really bothers me too much. I mean, if I know I want to buy luggage, I'm going to go to a store that sells luggage and that's it. You know, I mean, the name on the door doesn't really bother me that much. It's a matter of finding the right product, the right price, and hopefully the staff in the shop are, are nice at the same time. Now, I thought I'd point out M-Video here because this is pretty much one of the biggest electronics uh, stores in Russia. They're in pretty much every shopping center throughout Russia, not just Moscow. Now, very typically when you go into most electronic stores around the world, you'd sort of see Apple and Samsung right out the front, right? Now, if we have a look here just briefly at the front now, it's the size of a hypermarket, this place. It's bigger than any supermarket we would be to, but just electronics, home goods, computers, anything for your kitchen, 
appliances, but after Huawei, we've got Realme. Realme? Now, I'm pretty sure that these stores, particularly this one, sort of said, give us the biggest possible build out you've got and we'll be able to fit it in our store. So Realme, Huawei, then over here is Xiaomi. So have we seen any of the two major brands yet? Now I know we can see the Samsung one from right here in front of us. So there's definitely Samsung here and they've got a fairly big display of Samsung phones and tablets and the like and the wearables. But have we seen Apple yet? Here is uh, Xiaomi, Realme, every Chinese me that you can think of. And then over here is the kind of other, I guess, off brands of phones. And there's a fairly big choice of them as well. And I just want to show you how little they've got displayed of Apple. Now, obviously Apple said that they've left Russia, so they don't want any build outs in any stores. But there again, Apple is right here. All the different models. And then the Apple watches. And then this is actually Samsung over here, sorry. So this is Samsung on this side and then Apple on this side. So the whole store, I mean, we're talking a hypermarket store and you've just got about two square meters of Apple products. Uh, check that out. There's actually a few more over here. Now, they don't have the most uh, interesting display of them. It's kind of interesting. There's basically just the phones scotch taped in their boxes. It's kind of maybe the simplest looking display that they can possibly do to get Apple products on the shelves. Now, just walking out of uh, NVIDIA here, it's very overwhelming just how big this store is. Now, where I live, there is an NVIDIA also, but it's not nearly this big. This one is probably two times the size, maybe three times the size. And this is still not the largest electronic store in Russia. It's in another shopping center, but this one's awfully big. Now, another very well-known toy store or uh, kids store in Russia is Hanley's. Now, I've done a video at the Central Children's Store in Moscow, the largest children's store in the world. And Hanley's here has got, I think it's a five-level store or four-level store. And they've actually got a smaller one here. Now, it's not particularly big, but it's still a kid's toy store all the same. But they've now renamed themselves Winnie. I guess in, in reference to Winnie the Pooh, I don't know, but instead of Hanley's, it's now Winnie. And the guy there doesn't look so impressed with me walking by with the camera, but I thought I'd just point this out. If anyone's been to the children's store before in Moscow center, they'll probably recognize this red color. It's basically the huge part of that shopping center. This is Tikaboom now. This hasn't changed names, but this is one of those kind of kids drop off places. It's actually got a cafe in this one as well, so essentially you can let the kids go and play. Parents can have a coffee, nice and relaxing. And then they've got uh, all sorts of gym equipment, uh, trampolines, ball pits, climbing frames. And what I wanted to show actually here was uh, next door, Sabu. Sabu Sabu. I think that's actually Sibu, but no, Sabu. This was Crocs. And Crocs is back open, so uh, my friend uh, Matt, he has a channel here in Russia. Oh, Zdraspati. Uh, his channel's called Matt, Matt's Bima. Now he told me about this store and I had to come and get it in the video. So here it is. I think as I head up to this highest level here, you can slowly get an idea of how big this shopping center is. Or how big it feels anyway. It's just huge. This upper level as well is with all the restaurants are. And right in front of me here, is not the Golden Arches. Here's Kuzni i Tochka, probably the most famous of all of the rebranded uh, stores or places in Russia. Very famously, the one in Pushkin Square in the center of uh, Moscow. And there's plenty of people in here. It's not quiet in any way. I do remember coming here a couple of months into the uh, events of last year and this was all closed up and what was going to happen and have a look at it again, back to life. Plenty of people inside. 
Now, just walking around this upper level food court, I just thought I'd point out a few different kind of food options here. The actual place that I had was Franklin Burgers over here. That was my lunch today, but there's a kind of a Chinese market there, sushi buffet, American Chinese kitchen, Panda Express. Let me know if you know Panda Express, everybody around the world. I think most people know it pretty well. I'm not too sure. This looks like some sort of, oh, this looks like a Georgian restaurant right here. And then again, China Life, Poke Bowl, uh, Greek Street. So there's plenty of different food choices. And KFC, now I'm wondering when KFC will end up being called Rostic. Now there is a few stores already in Moscow that have closed and they've changed the signage to Rustic, but we're waiting for KFC to be changed to Rustic. When's it gonna happen? Let me know everybody. And then there's uh, Fash, which is another burger place over there. And all of the other restaurants off in the distance there are all sit down cafes. Yeah, there's quite an assortment of places. This is the other side here. I didn't notice all of these. Israel Grill. There is the Gaga Chicken Restaurant, Kroshka Katochka if you want traditional Russian fast food. Let's eat potatoes. It's another Georgian restaurant here. I'm not sure of this brand. Po Restaurant's not open there. Terimok, and then of course Burger King has to be in every shopping center in Russia. And then Hot Dog Bulldog. It's just kind of a interesting name for a cafe hot dog place hot dog bulldog it's got a lot of lights on it now i think no matter which shopping center i go to golden apple which is the name of this store here it's basically a perfume store uh, cosmetic skincare it's always the busiest place and there's always people streaming in and streaming out of this place it seems to be non-stop now this is a supermarket sized perfume shop and ladies if you ever go in there I don't expect to see you out for a good couple of hours if I bring my wife to the shopping center she's gone for the afternoon essentially but there is every brand of perfume cosmetics that you could ever wish for in Golden Apple now I've actually done a separate walk around of one of these locations in another shopping center so if you want to watch that, I'm going to put a card up so you can check that out as well. But very popular store in the shopping center. Now this lower level of the shopping center here has to kind of have the biggest amount of closed stores in one area here. The Chanel store is closed. It's been closed pretty much the entire last year. But of course they're paying rent. Pretty much everything's in the store as is. There's only maybe just a few things on the counter not laid out there. Hugo Boss also is not here but again they've got all the clothes on display they've even got the kind of winter jacket on the, uh, <laughs> the, the mannequins uh, we talked about zara a little bit earlier zara will reopen and this is a kind of a multi-level zara here so there's a upper and lower level to it here go boss again and if i just sort of scan across to the other side here we'll see here the very big tommy hilfiger store which is also being closed now close on a year again this is fully stocked everything is inside there is not a single piece of clothing out of place so very interesting what will happen to these stores where they've just sat a sat here i mean they're still paying rent the shopping center is still collecting money from them so as we come across another stars coffee now this shopping center has multiple locations like a lot of the shopping centers do they tend to have two of them or sometimes three of them here's massimo Dutti. these guys are also planning to reopen under a different name at some point in the near future they've said that but when it will happen nobody seems to know and i mean there's definitely people around you can see now a lot of people are coming in after work I spent a good few hours here. There's the other Hugo Boss store. And you can see here now all the other kind of bigger brands all clumped together here. And where they're all closed, it's very, very quiet. 
It's definitely much more noticeable on this lower ground level, all the stores that are closed and all of the businesses that are basically, I'm not sure, they, they haven't left, they're still here, the stores are still here, the brands are still on the doors, uh, but it's definitely more noticeable in this shopping center than in the one that I live, or the one that I go to, Solaris. I've covered that in a lot of different videos, but this store, this shopping center has a much higher concentrate of all of the brands uh, that have essentially left, as I keep mentioning it, but I mean, there's still a lot of stores open though. If you were to compare, you know, one closed for one open and so on like that, but there's really nobody down this end of the shopping center. Okay, everybody, so as I make my way out of the shopping center, I wanna thank you for watching today's video. A nice, interesting walk around of Metropolis Shopping Center. Now, I wanna to go to another one, it's called Europolis. So I don't wanna get them mixed up. Metropolis, Europolis. So many opolises here in Moscow. I guess it's a big metropolis based on the population. That's probably where they got the name of the shopping center from, I wonder. So thanks for watching. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Post a comment, let me know what you think. What do you think of some of the name changes of the stores? One brand to another, another brand to another. What do you think of all of that? Are you still gonna be going shopping there? Even if the name on the door has changed? Let me know your opinion, your thoughts, right in the comments. I've got another video for you to watch right after this one. You can click that one right away now if you like. Maybe it's an old video or someone that's some video that you've not seen on the channel. Yeah, thanks everybody, bye.